Hi, everyone. For those of you who are on the call, or we're just about to get started, uh, we'll probably you know, give it another couple of seconds, maybe 15, 30 seconds. Uh, we have participants trickling in. Uh, maybe just hang in there for uh, just a little longer, and we should be good to go. All right, I see uh, a bulk of participants and attendees are already in there. The uh, uh, probably people will still uh, jump into the meeting, but then given that it's a short session, uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, first and foremost, I'm DJ, I'm the head of marketing at Entitle, and I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of the team. It's a short event and we're going to keep it as crisp as possible. And it's also the last in our series of events for 2020. Uh, the next we, we will be seeing you is early 2021 and we'll be talking about that in a short while. Um, uh, as I said, it's a short compact session planned for today. And um, uh, what's interesting is while I'm looking at the uh, uh, attendees list, uh, a few more names just joined in. It's great to see representation on this webinar from so many of our customers. Uh, we are truly, truly honored to have all of you here. So let's just get started. Uh, once again, for those of you who just joined in, welcome to the Entitled User Conference December edition for 2020. Some do's and don'ts. Uh, use the Q&A area for questions. You'll see something called Q&A uh, in the little Zoom bar that pops up. Typically, it should be at the bottom of your screens or possibly at the top of your screen if you're in full screen mode. Use the Q&A area to ask questions. Use the chat area to uh, report any issues. You also have the ability to go ahead and chat with us. So in case uh, you are facing any issues with audio or uh, anything else, uh, drop a message there. We have folks who are constantly monitoring both the Q&A area and the chat area for uh, any queries or issues coming in from your end. The recording would be shipped to you after the event. We do need some time typically to polish the recording. We need to uh, chop off the unnecessary bits. So uh, bear with us. We will be sending this over to you in the next couple of days or probably in a week's time. And um, what we are discussing today, the, the uh, workflow that we are launching today, uh, we will have a lot more additional information coming over to you, to our customers, and also on our website publicly. Uh, as far as our customers are concerned, our customer engagement team, which typically talks to you through um, in-app messages or within the application, they typically drop you messages uh, when there's a new release and uh, different kinds of engagement and communication. That's the team that's going to be writing to you about a lot of things that we are discussing today, looking at today. And there is, there's going to be a lot more documentation, a lot more information coming your way. So those are a couple of do's and don'ts. With that, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, first up is Vivek Joshi. He's the founder and CEO of Entitle. He has decades of experience working with industrial OEMs and machinery manufacturers. If there's something out there as far as install base is concerned, Vivek has probably already seen it. We also have Amay with us. He's the VP of products. Um, he's the one who's been instrumental in building this product that you use every single day, every single month, every single week from the ground up. And he's constantly looking for the next big challenge to solve for our customers. So some uh, really committed and dedicated folks on the call today. And uh, without further delay, let me just go ahead and bring in Vivek. Vivek, over to you. Excellent. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country and the world. Uh, excited to have everybody on the call today. Uh, see a lot of familiar faces, like DJ said, and it's uh, really good to see everybody out here today again. So just in terms of uh, setting the stage for where we are, right, uh, we've been at this journey now for a few years. And it's very clear that the mission we set this company upon a few years ago is exactly what it is today which is fundamentally as industrial OEMs, as you all look at your install base, how do we really make it easy to find ways to increase loyalty and lifetime value uh, through the aftermarket? They always say a person, uh, a, a path to your love's heart is through their stomach. And I always think that the path to loyalty uh, is really through the aftermarket and post sales environment in most uh, industrial enterprises. You know, we've been very true to our values, if you may, as we built this process and we built the product and we built the company it fundamentally starts with you, the customer. We've been incredibly focused on the customer's success, right? Making sure that the value you get out of this is paramount. And that's how we built it. 
there's so many things we've built in this process uh, that we're going to share with you in the product in the next few slides and uh, minutes that really uh, speak to the values that you see out here. And fundamentally where we are with this is, you know, in 2020, looking back, it's really the grit and the resistance, persistence and the resilience that has really taken us through this uh, last few years, uh, last few months. So with that, uh, next slide, please, DJ. You know, I've been on the phone, I've been in Zoom meetings with, you know, countless customers, prospects in the last nine months. And what I hear from people time and time again is really straightforward. You know, it's an incredibly uncertain environment. Uh, we have a lot to do collectively, but resources aren't going to be plentiful as they were maybe two years ago, a year ago, right? So the over, overriding theme I've heard again and again from everybody is, listen, we have to find a way to do more with less, right? So what does that mean? It means productivity. It means finding ways to squeeze the maximum out of the resources you have today. And what better way to do it than using data to drive that transformation? Uh, but at the same time, your customers, your users aren't going to settle for anything less. And the demands, the expectations that they have are changing uh, in a more stringent manner, right? Uh, the, this whole consumerization of the enterprise, as I say, is taken on a new meaning in the, in, the, in the midst of the pandemic. And we've all got used to certain behaviors, certain aspirations, if you may, that the, the customer-oriented companies do, that that's now becoming the norm in the industrial enterprise as well. So, you know, we can't settle for less. We can't just give people uh, some low-end offering and low-end service just to get by because the times are tough. Uh, and then finally, I think when you start thinking about everything that's going on here, again, the overriding theme that I hear from everybody is just remarkable, especially in the aftermarket world. Uh, our customers are incredibly grateful and thankful for what has been achieved with their customers, uh, the resilience everybody's shown. And if there's one interesting fact I can share with you is that I've heard now from bulk of our customers today, and again, talking to other people in the ecosystem, that while the equipment businesses may have struggled, uh, certainly in March, April, May, June, maybe, and they're coming back slowly, the fundamental resilience and the strength of the aftermarket business has shown through in this difficult time. In fact, most of the people I've talked to have told me that their performance in the post-sales service aftermarket, however you characterize it, has stayed almost to the original 2020 plans, which is remarkable. So with that, I want to uh, uh, ask my colleague Amai to come in and share some of the findings he's uh, had and what led us to uh, building out this product here. So Amai, over to you. Hey, thanks Vivek. So, hey everyone, before um, I jump into this 2020 year in review and these numbers that I want to cover, I first just want to say a big, big thank you to everybody on the phone today, um, especially our users, of course, uh, because a lot of what we develop in the product and our roadmap uh, comes from your input. A lot of you do take time uh, to provide feedback to us on different features and provide input and ideas about certain features, many of which uh, we do consider in building into the product and actually do build into the product. And uh, what you're about to see today is sort of an amalgamation of a lot of ideas that have come from a lot of different customers. So once again, thank you. Please keep providing lots of feedback to us. Um, it really helps us grow as a company and create more value for you as users. So looking back uh, at 2020, it was actually a really good year for us despite everything that's been going on. Um, we've increased the number of assets by uh, over 2.5X, which is huge. Uh, we have now processed 250 million records. That's huge. Um, and company that with a 300% increase in the total number of users. And while all of that is amazing, we've also been able to improve our performance of the application as well as grow our NPS score to over 60. And for those of you who may not be familiar uh, you know, with what a 60 plus NPS score means uh, for SaaS applications like, like Entitled, the average tends to be around 30 to 35. Um, so 60 plus is really good. And uh, we've gotten that score thanks to uh, your input and your feedback on our NPS survey. And then finally, uh, this year, we launched a whole new in-app uh, support, sort of chat support uh, tool called Talk to Us. Uh, very, very casual, very, very friendly. And many of you have used it uh, to provide feedback, to ask questions, get responses, et cetera. And I'm really, really proud to say that um, the mean first response time has been less than 30 minutes. So um, you know, again, a big round of applause to all of you as users, but also to the entire team, uh, the engineering, the product design, and support and customer facing teams that have really helped uh, us achieve these numbers. Next slide. But um, 
enough about us. Uh, let, let's talk about you. Um, so rewind back to one year ago uh, at the end of 2019. Uh, it was different. 2019 was fundamentally a different year, of course. Uh, but what we heard from you is also different. We heard that you wanted access to more and more information. You wanted to segment that information through multiple different ways and then act on that information really, really quickly. And then bringing that forward now into 2020, next slide, please. Um, bringing that forward into 2020, uh, we see that things are dramatically different. Number one, as Vivek rightly mentioned, you now need to do more with less. Um, and therefore it's not enough for you to just find all of that information. There's a lot of information, but how quickly can you understand that? There's so much information, so much data out there. How do you make sense of it? There's almost an overload of information now. And now in, in today's day and age where so many things are virtual, you're starting to do virtual selling, uh, it comes with its own set of challenges and you actually really have to spend a lot of time understanding the data to then uncover the various opportunities that lie in that data. So, as we spoke about, uh, I think about two or three months ago during one of our webinars, we spoke about in install-based selling. And fundamentally, install-based selling, it's hard. Um, today, you have to get all that information from a lot of different systems. And even once you have all that data in one place, uh, with, which a lot of you do thanks to Entitled Insights, to actually gather and to visualize that information, it, it takes time. It, you know, It's time that you guys don't have. Um, as Vivek again mentioned, you have to be more productive and, than ever. Uh, efficiency is at the core uh, and productivity is at the core of your 2021 plans. And then finally, we said, you know, uh, your customer base, your existing customer base is going to be the biggest growth driver for you in 2021. And in order to enable that, you have to have your customers trust. It's absolutely critical and enable a really, really good experience. And so given that today, I'm really excited to launch uh, the Customer Central 360. Um, it, it sounds really nice and it is gonna be really nice because we're gonna show it to you in a bit. It's, uh, it's the beginning of uh, the first step in our journey to becoming the operating system for your install base. And you know, I hope that tagline stays with you because we'll be launching more and more features in the future uh, to truly become the operating system for your install base. Um, this new feature has got an amazing design uh, you're going to have quick access to it, get, get quick insights, uh, and it's going to enable you to make faster decisions. But I don't want to just talk through uh, what this uh, feature can do for you. I actually want to show it to you. And so now, um, DJ, if I can get control, I'd love to show everyone what we've built uh, for Customer Central 360. And uh, while I bring this up, uh, everybody, uh, feel free to ask questions through the uh, Q&A panel, um, and we'll get to that at the end of the event. If we cannot answer all your questions, uh, we will follow up in uh, through our engagement channels uh, in follow-up emails, et cetera. All right, so I hope you all um, can see my screen. Uh, DJ, if you could just let me know you can see my screen. Yes, I we can. Perfect. All right, so <clears throat> um, today the screen that you see is in Title Insights, the, the location 360, as we call it, the screen that you are all used to. Um, it's got, as I said, a lot of information, a lot of data. Uh, you've got data, you've got data, and you've got more data. So um, it is not very easy today to understand that information. Very simply, if I wanted to figure out the number of equipment at this site, it's kind of hidden away over here. If I then wanted to understand, okay, hey, they've got 11 pieces of equipment. How have they been buying parts? What is the trend on that been? Um, well, how would you do that today? It's not really easy to tell that either. And um, uh, you can't really figure out, okay, what's the trend in service bin? When was the last service? You'll have to click here and then look at that information. Are they under an existing service contract? If not, uh, how much service have they spent after the service contract has expired, <clears throat> et cetera. So it's, it's really not easy today to get all of that information really, really easily. You may have to download it. I think a lot of our customers today um, download that information um, to figure all of that out. And we heard from a lot of you that uh, while having access to this data was really, really good, um, sometimes it was a little hard to understand. And through a lot of different uh, 
uh, feedback from a lot of different users and customers. Um, I actually really built a whole overview page from the ground up that I'm about to show you right now. And this is called the entire customer central 360. I wish we were in a stadium right now and you guys you could actually hear some uh, applause, but uh, it's, it's actually really, really, really nice. I mean, the, the team has spent a lot of time building this from the ground up, considering each graph, each metric to answer the questions than the use cases that we've heard from users. Walking through this really quickly, um, we've got, again, like I said, easy to understand. Okay, they've got 10 pieces of equipment, uh, a high propensity to buy, but now we've got trends, right? You can figure out what is the parts revenue trend? What is the services revenue trend for this site? Has it been declining? Has it been growing? What is the year over year change? <coughs> Sorry. Um, how is the spread of the install base? How old is their equipment? Is majority of their equipment older than five years? Is it longer than five years? You know, should we be upgrading them? Uh, how, how is, what is the spread by different categories of equipment? Are they, do they still have some obsolete equipment in the field? When did they last make transactions? When was the last spot, service, equipment transaction? All of this information right at your fingertips. Are they under an existing, existing service contract? In this case, they're not. Again, really, really easy, not just giving you a line of information, but also the color coding there, telling you it's expired in red, so it catches your eye and you know immediately that this customer is no longer under an existing service contract. And then while all of this was great, you said, okay, hey, now I can finally understand my customer in one screen really, really quickly. We also want to present what are the top opportunities for you to go and talk to this customer. Clearly in this case, okay, they haven't renewed their service contract and there's an open opportunity to renew that. So um, the idea behind this was to give you summarized information, easy to access information really, really quickly uh, to suit multiple personas. So whether you're in marketing, service, sales, <coughs> um, this can all suit your various needs. We will be making this more and more configurable with different charts and uh, analysis over time. This is really just the beginning. Um, for our friends that do like to go into the details, well, you can do that too. Oops, sorry. Um, you can dive into the details as well. Uh, we've re revamped and redesigned the entire equipment and parts and all the service, uh, it's all the tabs um, to give you, to spread out the information, make it easier for you to analyze. And we'll be introducing some more uh, filtering and search capabilities as well. So. Um, again, super, super excited to launch this for you, but I'm not done yet. Um, we've actually got one more thing uh, that we wanted to discuss and uh, it was actually created later, much after we had uh, built this feature. And as we were talking to users, what we realized is, you know, in order for you to sell to some sites effectively, you also need to understand things that were happening at the account level. And so we decided to say, okay, how do we take this concept and apply it to an account instead? So if we now jump back and zoom out a bit. We can now see um, an account overview and it looks different uh, from the location overview because the way you think about an account is fundamentally different from the way you think about a site. For an account you care about, okay, how many locations are that account? Maybe the, the revenue trend for that account, but then you wanna compare the different locations in that account, how are they performing? How is the equipment and the install base spread by different locations under that account? And finally, you can have a full list of all the locations under that account. It's not tucked away on the side anymore. Uh, you can actually get a full understanding of that entire uh, location list uh, right over here, front and center. And you can even map out the accounts uh, locations in this interactive map as well. So again, really, really um, easy to use, really, really easy to digest. And if you ever want to jump in and get some more information about a location, you just click in. So simple as that. Um, again, the idea was for you to get a really quick overview of all the information. And uh, with that, we'll now move back um, from, uh, from the demo back to the presentation. Uh, DJ, Thanks, you can share. Yeah. Yep, I'll go ahead and share my screen. I do see that the questions are trickling in. Thank you so much for asking these questions, folks. Um, I, mean, I believe you're going to take those questions um, towards the end of the session. Sure. Uh, yes. So we'll park those there. But please do keep them coming, and we'll, we would love to answer all of them today. 
So I'll go ahead and share my screen once again, and then we'll start from where we last left off. Uh, okay. All right, so um, the biggest question that I see right now is, okay, when do we get our hands on this? Um, well, starting early next quarter, you will get your hands on this um, in the current form. And then uh, over the quarters, we're gonna actually launch more and more features to, for, to begin with. Uh, different tab level filters and the ability to drill down from these charts into the details. Um, and then you'll be able to customize uh, this application and this page uh, more towards your preferences. So maybe you care about service contracts more than say uh, the service revenue trend or the parts revenue trend. And so you can move that up to the top if you want, right? So you're gonna be able to do um, some of those things uh, and customize this the way you want. And um, that's not all. Uh, we are gonna be launching a lot more in 2021. Uh, a lot of things we're really, really excited about, uh, a bill of materials, uh, you know, again, enabling you to find and understand more information within our application. Mobile, um, I did see a question about mobile and yes, we will be launching a mobile version soon um, uh, in next year. So we're already working on that. It's under, under development and we can't wait for you to get your hands on it. Um, we're going to give you the ability to manage service contracts and warranties, uh, similar to how you can sort of manage assets today in our application. Uh, so giving you more capability and control over, data, over the data there. And then finally, uh, we are going to continue our investment in uh, support and education and um, uh, you know, give you more personalized support and education, as well as hold more events like this, where now is right today, it's you know, Vivek and myself talking, but in the future, we want the users to talk to each other, learn from each other, um, and you know both small and big events, and we're really excited to carry that forward in the in the next year. But that's not all. Um, today, uh, beyond customer central 360, we do want to talk about one more thing, and I'm going to hand it over to Vivek to talk about that. Thank you, Mike. Should we take some questions first? Uh, because I noticed there's about six different questions out there on the site before we get into uh, the the future. Uh, Oh. ideas that we have yeah absolutely um cool. and uh sorry i did miss some of them um so yes one was on a mobile app that i did see and uh we are going to be launching one so uh we will let you know once that's out there um the ability to um enter in there's a question about the ability to enter information uh for the territory um or enter data into the application or whether you have to rely on us getting the data from say your third party systems um, so today, Entitle does have the ability for you to uh, enter information, uh, if it's asset information or location information primarily. Uh, like I said, service contracts and warranties is something we will plan. We do plan on launching, and so at that time, you'll be able to enter more information for that. Uh, if you do want to enter parts or service-related uh, order information, uh, that's something we don't support today. But uh, I always, uh, I would encourage you to maybe write to us through talk to us or through support at Entitle.com. And uh, one of our product managers would definitely get on the phone with you and try to understand your use case there. And um, let's see, okay, are these charts configurable? Yes, they're going to be configurable, not uh, to begin with, but uh, uh, very soon, and you'll be able to customize this quite a bit. And um, let's see, um, how is this different from say a Salesforce customer 360, for example? Well, um, fundamentally, um, the Salesforce customer 360 uh, is a very generic 360. It's uh, primarily built for B2C companies, uh, not for B2B industrial OEMs. Uh, in title, as you saw from our mission, it is to enable B2B industrial OEMs uh, to grow and capture customer lifetime value. So everything we do is purpose built for the industrial OEM world. And hence, why all the graphs, all the charts, all the metrics that you saw is very, very tailored to, in the, to industrial OEMs. And um, yeah, I think DJ, I think I've answered all, all the questions uh, from, our, from our guests. All right, Good great. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Amai. Thank you very much for that demonstration. Uh, next page, please. So I'm actually excited to, to end this, uh, uh, this uh, webinar, if you may, with two different uh, points out here. There's two things coming up soon that I want to make sure uh, I share with you. First and foremost, you know, a lot of the stuff you saw today is thanks to some really good feedback and uh, and people who care, if you may, and the user base and a customer base uh, about making sure that they're successful. We help them be successful. And they've given us some tremendous feedback that you see embodied in the product today. 
you know, this has been a very much an informal relationship with our customers in terms of getting feedback. We decided to kind of formalize this in, in the form of a customer advisory board. And I'm really, really excited that we got a top-notch group of leaders, uh, business leaders across our customers who we've uh, asked and they agreed to join this advisory board. You see the names uh, on the right-hand side. They're all uh, veterans. They're all experienced business leaders in the industrial OEM world, in the aftermarket world, IT, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's just a superb group of people. And really what they, the core mission of this group is really to help understand what are the trends and the themes in the market, what's happening around them, uh, what are we hearing from them, uh, the quick market intelligence, as we call it. But in this case, it'll be maybe every couple of months, we'll kind of pulse them to see what's happening. And we're really going to use that to start uh, driving our product strategy and roadmap. There's a bunch of exciting things that I might have talked about a couple of minutes ago. Those have come about from all these various conversations, but we will be now sharing these roadmaps with them on a more regular basis, getting the feedback and really embodying their point of view into this thing. And there'll be annual meetings with them uh, once, a, once a year, trying to get together uh, uh, with them uh, in, a, in a location once COVID allows us to get to it. Otherwise it'll be telephonic meetings for now. So I'm excited very much uh, with, with the kinds of uh, folks we have on this board. So thank you very much for all of you who agreed to be there. The next page, please. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is, as DJ pointed out a few minutes ago, uh, you know, at the start of the start of the thing, this is the last event for 2020 for us. And I'm excited that the next industry, in, industry next event we're going to have is on January 13th, uh, market calendars, noon Eastern for about two and a half hours. And at this point, the keynote speaker that you've got for this event is uh, Dave Cody. Dave used to be a, he's a former CEO of Honeywell. Uh, he also had uh, led a company called TRW uh, and then as a uh, previous time at GE as well. And what's interesting about Dave's background is that in the last recession, great recession, if you may, in 2008, 2009, you know, he and the management team at Honeywell did a phenomenal job leading the company through pretty perilous times. And I think a lot of what they did was a model for how to kind of navigate in tough situations. And I think it'll be good for us to all hear from Dave at that event. So I'm excited that he's agreed to be a keynote speaker. So please mark your calendars. Over the next two weeks, we will start sharing more detailed agenda. Uh, we got some great speaker lineup for you. And so uh, we're, we're excited about Jan 13th as well. And finally, to end this call, to end this session today, the, the last slide, uh, please, DJ. Uh, from my perspective, uh, the way I think about it is the following, right? The next 12 months is gonna be a, a challenge for all of us. I've talked to so many people in the ecosystem uh, everybody's expectations are muted in terms of what they, they want to see or what they think they'll see from their customer base, from the economy, which means it's all about making sure that uh, we go back to the original themes of this conference uh, call, which is do more with less, but don't, uh, don't uh, uh, what do you call it? Don't uh, go down in expectations, keep maintaining expectations, but also make sure you kind of do what you can in terms of, main, uh, in terms of being able to be resilient. So, our goal is to help you keep marching forward. Uh, we're excited that Customer 360 is one starting point here. There's many more things on the way. So with that, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the session today. Uh, if there's any more questions, Amaya and myself are happy to stay on the line uh, and take questions. But uh, thank you very much for all of you for devoting 30 plus minutes of your, of your day today to listen to what we have uh, in store for you immediately and over the next 12 months as well. So with that, uh, I... I appreciate your time today and thank you very much. And again, we'll, we'll be online if you need uh, uh, any, any more questions to the Q&A uh, portal. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mike. Thanks for your message. Um, we, do we have a question? uh lisa just wrote please let me know who to contact i think this came in just now uh yeah i think lisa you can write to support at entitled.com and one of our uh, csms will reach out to you all right that's support at entitled.com you're welcome lisa okay so we are at time um so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much again, uh, everybody who's on the call. Uh, thank you for making it uh, to this event. Look forward to talking to you in the next year. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.